Okay, this is the new zones chart. It is replacing the old zones chart. This one is pretty much fully fleshed out as usual. If you can find something that I missed, please let me know, but I think I got it all. This is a chart that is divided into the way that men categorize women and the way that women categorize men. Men have one set of values. Men add up what we think about your looks, your personality, we subtract how much availability you're giving to other men, and then here I drew a cabinet, which is the male version of the galaxy, because there are other things that can make women more and less valuable to men, but it's not very much. Mm. These many, many things can make a big difference, a big impact on how women like men, but over here it's not that big of an impact. Hey guys, it's your girl Melanie, and I came across this channel called Ho Math. Uh, and you guys know I like a good analysis. I like people who can really illustrate their point using graphs and charts. And and I, I like to go into the psychology of things, of why we do things as men and women, especially uh, in the relationship space. And <laughs> As you can see, and I'll put a link to this video below and to his channel. He has he does a lot of illustrations in its film like this, which I think is a unique way. But I, I think at first glance, he's he's trying to show it, especially for women. I think this is important because I I we all know men already know these things, especially if you've been watching any content in these spaces. We know, and even it's broadly known that men are simple are simple creatures in terms of what they desire. As far as women, as you, if you saw in the thing, men have like these, this little small side and with women, it's all these different things. So uh, let's continue. So this is basically the way that men decide how much they value you. And then once we decide from the best I can get to the worst I'll take where we're gonna put you, you kind of, end up in one of these boxes and it can be pretty hard to leave in order to do that you would have to either improve your looks or your personality or get rid of the male attention that you have in your life mm. and you're not going to really be able to do it with this if if this isn't cutting it for us this is a big lesson that a lot of women need to learn you can't overcome lack in this department by wearing a t-shirt that he likes or picking up a hobby that he likes that's mm. why it's a cabinet it's very very or i will say talking about your degrees or your career and these these tertiary things that can add you know to the household to your um to your the quality of the type of woman you are but it does not supersede these other things and looks and personality are the top two and then you need to also understand that men look at your behavior if you have a lot of male attention because getting into a relationship is a huge risk for a man especially when we talk about marriage small it makes a small impact if your cabinet is perfect for the man that you want it might give you half a point to a point this is really most of it Women, on the other hand, they have two sets of criteria that they mm -hmm. evaluate men on. They have good guy stuff and bad boy stuff. And mm -hmm. this is one of the reasons that there's so much confusion in our culture about what women want, because they wow. say they want good guy things, and then they actually go with men who have bad boy things. But the truth is they want both and you don't have to choose. In our language, we say, I'm a good guy, or I'm a bad boy, or I'm good, or I'm bad, or this is, but really you can be both of these things. And in order to be both of these things, you have to maximize your physical attractiveness, face, body, height, voice, all the things that you can do, lose weight, get muscle, maximize it, and maximize your masculinity, dominance, power, confidence, smoothness, which is I'll explain that later. Smoothness is basically how well you understand women. If hmm. you can approach a woman and you know what it is that she responds to, she's going to go, oh, you understand women. That's your smooth. That requires some more unpacking. And women also respond to dark triad traits. This is a big difference between men and women. Men do not need women to have any 
evil stuff, any bad boy stuff. We mm. don't need bad girls. Some guys like bad girls, but that's a personality thing. They, men in general don't need girls to be bad. Women need men to be at least somewhat bad. You got to be dangerous. You have to have the ability to be dangerous, not mm. necessarily go to jail, but you have to be capable of it. And that will boost your bad boy score. Which is what you really want. You would. It's better to be all bad and no good than it is to be all good and no bad because then you end up in the friend zone. Wow. So, so I would say, I mean, this is, I really love this. You guys, I'm a visual learner. So I just, that's why I do reaction videos. I just like, I love looking at things and then it just makes more sense to me. Um, but what you see here is I will say the only caveat I will give is that men do like bad girls when it comes to the sleepers or the sweepers because at that point especially the sweepers uh it and he's going to explain it because they're usually will be promiscuous wild in bed kind of that crazy girl that will do anything um and will be sexually satisfying they'll be fun they'll be you know you know, they're just, they're all over the place. So for some men that can be exciting in dating. When we talk about long-term relationships, commitment and marriage, it's a no-go. Both of these speech and thought bubbles are arranged the same way. The higher up you go, the more it is based in love, which is supportive, public, monogamous, and emotional. And the farther down you go, the less love there's going to be and the more lust, which is going to be opportunistic, secret, mm. multiple partners at many times, and impulsive. Mm -hmm. So, of course, a man is going to have lust for a keeper. Of course he is, because that mm -hmm. means that he likes the way she looks. But he's wow. going to have a lot of love for her. Way down here, he's going to have no love at all, and it's going to be entirely a lust-based relationship. Wow. Sleepers in the middle, where we have what women call situationships, that's where there's some level of emotional connection, but it's not really enough to be the one and only. Mm. You're kind of in a middle zone, and and the the man will say things like, "I don't know where I'm gonna be in three weeks," you know, like I don't I don't know <laughs> what my life is. Yes, we do. We do know what our life is. We do know where we're gonna be. Know. We just kind of want to wait for someone who we're definitely gonna put in here. You gotta stop listening to these things. So for women, avoiding getting into these bad relationships is a lot easier than it is for men to avoid getting in these bad, bad relationships. You just have to know how he feels about your looks, your personality, and your exposure to other men and the stuff you have in common. Mm -hmm. Figure out how much he likes you and mm -hmm. judge it by how much investment he's giving you. How much of his time and energy and money and whatever it is that you value, because every woman values different kinds of investment. But if you value something and he's not giving it to you, because this is the higher you go, the more investment, the lower you go, the less investment. If he's not giving you the investment that you want, that's a very clear signal that you're not here. And you wow. either have to change something to get here or you have to leave and find another guy who likes you. Sorry. Okay, so this is, I know, guys, this is why it's called home math, because this is very logical. We all know these things inherently, but our behaviors, especially as women, we, we don't, we want to, we don't see this. It's like we don't want to map it out. We use a lot of magical thinking, a lot of hope, a lot of manifestation, and rarely are we using logic. We will have we will make decisions based on emotions, how we feel. We will make decisions about men based on um, how they make us feel in the moment. You know, whether he looks nice, he's like, he has money, all those different types of things, or he's good in bed. We will make decisions about that. And we don't really logically think through, is this man going to be a good husband down the road in five years, 10 years, 15 years, 20 years. And I think the reason is because a lot of women want love and marriage in terms of what it represents, getting a man to be loyal and kind of the ideal. But the way we behave and the way we date, it's we don't act like we want to get married. We don't act like we want commitment. We want to be free. We want to be, you know, live our lives the way we want to until we reach a certain age. Then it's like, OK, now I want a good man to settle with. But if we thought about it logically, like here, 
we will be making better choices earlier and not getting, you know, going through the heartbreak that we cause our own selves. So just really quick for men, Keepers is obviously my one and only. This is the one woman that we care about the most. Sleepers is these are girls who we like and we're attracted to them. And as you can see, this is the public private line. There are some times that sleeper relationships enter into the public arena and will go out with you. But we still aren't really committed and we kind of waffle a little. And then there are some times where sleeper relationships are like, let's just keep this between us. Just come over at midnight, right? Once Ooh. you get down into sweepers, Booty this is call? usually just mistakes. We usually wish we hadn't done this. It might be related to alcohol or maybe it's been a really long time. But if there's any ever any kind of contact here, it's called sweepers as in under the rug because we don't want anyone to know about it. So if a guy So this is very important. A lot of the women that are crying on that you see, we they see them crying about he's a bad boy, they're not being committed, he's not doing this, he's not doing that. He there's no opportunity for that to become a relationship, a true relationship for you to be the one and only. Because from the outset, you are seen as a sweeper. Are you doing Netflix and chill? Are you just coming over to hang out? And I especially see this a lot in the younger population. Like they're doing these things and then get mad that the guy is not opening doors for them, taking them to nice dates or treating them a certain way. Because I will say the majority of women now are accepting being sleepers and sweepers. And we don't want to admit it to ourselves because that pride, that ego, and rather than change our behavior and not allow a man to use us as a sleeper and a sweeper, we would rather, rather than allowing that, we would rather just turn the blame to the men who are doing that. Men don't have permission to do to you what you don't allow guy has ever had any level of a relationship with you and tried to hide you and not answer the phone and disappeared and everything, that's where you were. And you need to not be there because it's pretty uncomfortable. Let me just say the other thing. A lot of women will choose to be a sleeper or a sweeper for a Chad, um, a Tyrone, a guy who has really good looks or status or money. They would rather be a sleeper or a sweeper for him than actually be the one and only for a good man. For a man that doesn't have all these things on the, uh, like in terms of, oh, he's over six feet. He makes over six figures. He has a six pack or six inches. I don't know which one it goes back and forth. Women would rather have the opportunity to be a sleeper and sweeper to that chat, that high level guy that in their mind, who they think is high level for whatever reason, they would rather be that because it's, it's nice to be, in a, it gives them an ego boost. It feeds our ego to feel like, oh, a man up here, a man that looks like this wants to be with me, but he only wants to be with you for physical. But he's not doing, the, the woman that he actually is his one and only, the woman that he wants, he's doing the investing. investing. He's doing the things for her, He or he will do those things for her. You are trying to win over man that will never see you above where he's already placed you. Once you go into sleeper and sweeper category, that's it. So why do you keep, why do we keep trying to fight fight those guys instead of looking at the other men, the men who will invest in you. It just is oxymoronic. It's like we just, we want to complain about the things we choose to do and overlook the good men that uh, would make suitable partners and uh, husbands. So for women, it's obviously a lot more complicated because women have two sets of criteria that they judge men on. One of them is good guy stuff and one of them is bad boy stuff. Good guy stuff, the level of good guy things that you have, which is, of course, how much you're investing in her. Is it enough for her? Are you presentable? Does that make you look good? That's um, for women, looks is broken down into presentable and face and body and height and voice. So there's men have that both in one thing, but women have looks separate. So if you're a really you know, physically unattractive guy, but you're very well put together and you're giving a woman a lot of investment, then you would have a really high good guy score and a very low bad boy score. Mm -hmm. And you would end up in the friend zone. Mm -hmm. So the amount that a woman thinks you are a good guy is going to be the amount of investment that you're giving her compared to what she wants. Mm -hmm. The amount that you make her look good when you're seen together in public, because that's going to push you above the public line. And then this is important. 
men sub- subtract other men from their valuation of women, and women subtract other women from their valuation of men in the good guy zone. But women will very often keep going back to a bad boy that has a lot of girls or wow. a situationship with a guy who has a lot of girls. They, wow. Women generally do not subtract other women from the bad boy score. Wow. They take other women from the good guy score because that's going to take away your investment in her. Mm. And over here, having other women does not take away your investment in her because it's all based in excitement and, and physical things. And then finally, uh, of course, women have the galaxy. And that's many, many, many little things that each individual woman values separately, which is the male version is the cabinet. In here, a woman might have like being good with kids or liking pets or having the same hobbies in common or wearing a particular kind of shirt. There's <laughs> oh lots and God. lots of little details in here that don't wow. quite fit into anything else. It's just wow. what fits with her life, what matches with her experience and with her feelings. And it's difficult to really predict what that's going to be. It's very individual for everybody. And this is very individual for everybody too, but this only matters a little bit. And this, if you have what a woman wants in here, it can give you a few points. Like if you're not particularly presentable, but you're okay, and you don't have a lot to invest, but you're okay, and you have a load of things in common with her, it can boost you up a few points on the good guy mm-hmm. score. Again, not the bad boy score. So all of those things in the good guy score, they measure how much the woman trusts you to be able to be there for her and make her look good and have a a very public relationship, very public. The more you are a good guy, the safer that she will feel going out with you and being seen with you in the friend zone, husband zone, or the prince charming zone. Mm -hmm. But again, if you have only good guy traits, she's not going to like you enough for any of these zones. You have to have some bad boy traits. And it could be just looking good. That's enough for some women. It can be, there are some guys who don't look that good, but they're very, very smooth again. And they have experience with women and women like it Mm -hmm. when they know you have experience with women. If you are very dominant, if you're good at something like a sport, if you're the head of your social group, if you're the boss Mm -hmm. at a job, like if she works somewhere and her boss is very, very dominant over other people, that's going to sort of trigger something in there. It triggers something in the, in the bad boy continuum. Mm. Uh, Men who are very confident in themselves. Mm -hmm. Dark triad traits also appears here. Dark triad traits are linked to power. And one of the ways that power is Mm. most easily accrued for men is by being kind of brutal to other people and using them and tricking them. And it can get pretty dark. That's why it's called that. But it does result in men getting more power and more money and more status. And all of those things are attractive to women. So I want to say also those things that women are attracted to, the dark triad, the power that they, they will see in a man when they get into a relationship with him, they start to want to change that. They don't like that he could be dismissive. They don't like that he's not thoughtful. They don't like that he's, you know, um, not caring and all those things, but it's attractive, the power, but women, we don't logically think through, okay, how does it, how is this going to look? How does this translate in a marriage in day-to-day living with someone like that? Because, a man who is caring, a man is a man who um, shows affection, a man who doesn't use people, a man who has these kind of good guy qualities. We don't find it attractive when we're dating or when we're picking a mate, but then we find it attractive in a husband. So why are we picking men? Why are you we going after men that have these? these traits that we know long-term do not work. And I think the reason why is because a woman finds, a woman gains power in her ego and a boost when she's able to subdue or get a man to settle down with her, getting a bad boy, getting a powerful man to change just for her. She's okay with him doing certain things to other people, but with her, she wants him to have a completely different personality than what he showed up to the table with. And this is the power struggle in relationships that women are going through. They, they are up. This is where you're getting the, um, alpha widowed and women crying and bemoaning about men. It's because they went into something 
not all, but a lot of the times we will go into something, know that there's red flags, but the red flags entice us because it's exciting, it's new, we like that level of power. And subconsciously, we know if we can get a man like this to be committed to just us, to to care about us, then we are special now. We are different than the other girls. Again, different women value different things differently. And you can have no looks at all, but very high masculinity, and women will like you like this. That mm -hmm. Women are very different from men in that way. If a woman is really unattractive, but has a great personality, we generally will not say, well, her personality is worth enough to get up here. You, you have to have at least a bare minimum of looks for men. But for women, I want you to Google Henry Kissinger. He is mm. not an attractive man, but mm. he was sleeping with supermodels because he was very, very powerful on a global scale. Mm -hmm. Masculinity is very attractive to women. So you mm. can have a maximum bad boy score if you have super high masculinity, if you have super high power and no looks. It's different. Wow. So the way that a woman feels about your two scores, she's going to evaluate what are your good guy traits and what are your bad boy traits, and she's going to evaluate how she feels about you. That creates, I split it up into nine zones, and I just used terms that are familiar in our culture to make it easier for people to understand. We'll start with nothing. If you have no bad boy traits at all and no good guy traits, you're a ghost. Women mm -hmm. don't even recognize you. You're just the thing. You're, you're, if you're the mailman, you're just the thing that makes the mail come, unless you're very attractive and then you would jump up to here. Uh, let's start by going up the good guy scale. If you are less than half good, if you're, if you're below this public line and you have no bad boy traits at all and you're less than half good and you're pursuing a woman, she's going to say, ew, you're a creep. You don't mm -hmm. have, you're not attractive to me at all, and mm -hmm. you're not very good. So I don't want to be around you. Mm. If you go a little bit above half, women will have a gold digger relationship with men in this area if they have a lot of money. If they don't have a lot of money, it's kind of like ick. It's so right there, that's where you get the sugar daddy, sugar babies, and that type of thing, or women who are with men for money. They're not really attracted to you. Um, they're not really wanting to be with you, but we can perform. Women can pretend um, quite well if there's enough financial benefits in a relationship. Kind of just, okay, this guy's pretty nice, but I don't feel anything for him. And so it's just kind of gross and leave me alone. It's similar to creep, but a creep is like someone who you would not want to talk to at all, someone who you would want gone from your life, but you'd be aware of him. You would not be aware of the ghost. It would be something like, well, I, he has to be around and I have to tolerate him, but I don't really want to think about, mm. you know, starting a relationship with this guy unless he has tons of money. And then some women will put up with it again. Some women, again, everyone is different. If you max out your good guy score and you have no bad boy points at all, you're going to be in the friend zone. Women will go out in public with you. They will mm -hmm. let you buy them things. Mm -hmm. that, that If you're very, very good to her and you're treating her with investment and you're making her look good and you don't have other women. I, I had a video recently with a girl talking about having a guy in the friend zone and he got a girlfriend and so she lost her investment. And she said, well, that makes me feel bad. But then again, it wasn't a relationship, so I can't say anything. She was mm. just talking about losing free investment from a guy who she didn't wow. like at all. So this is not somewhere you want to be. And this is something that a lot of men have trouble with. They, they, they be as nice as they can be. And they go, why don't women want me? And it's because women are not attracted to this. It's what makes them feel safe and comfortable, and it's what makes them want to spend time around you. It's what makes them trust you. It what ma it's what makes them want to be seen with you or build a future with you, but it's not what makes them attracted to you. This confuses men because when women give us what we value, they shoot right up this chart. And we wonder why that doesn't work for us. And the reason is that you either are not good looking and you, I mean, God forbid that you're, you have unfixable things about you, but hopefully you can lose some weight and gain some muscle and start dressing better and become more masculine. If there are things that you cannot fix about your body, you have mm. to at least be more manly 
Mm. And then that's going to give you some degree of points. So if you are maximum nice and you become more manly by working on yourself, take care of your face and your body and, and become more of a man, you might move into the husband zone. If you do a fantastic job, you could move into the Prince Charming zone, but this is very, 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 very rare. Mm. So we did the first column. Let's do the second column. If you are a medium bad boy, if you're medium bad, if you're medium attractive or medium masculine, kind of manly, but not really, and you have no good guy things at all, sometimes you will be women's drunken mistake. This is kind of like wow. the female sweeper. She might make a mistake and, and she'll feel like, well, you, I, you aren't really a bad boy. You don't really do it for me. I, we shouldn't have done this. I thought that you were going to be more exciting, but you're really lukewarm and you're not nice at all. Wow. If you are medium bad and you're, again, under half good, this is a bad situation ship. This range is situation ships and this one is settling because at, at this point, this can become permanent in public, but right. in all three of these, this these are where the man will not commit, and this is where the woman will not commit. Uh, so they're all situationships, okay. but different kinds. This one, again, the bad situationship is with a guy who's half attractive or half masculine, mm -hmm. half what women, you know, get excited about, but not nice enough to settle for and not even close to nice enough to be in the husband zone, wow. not giving enough investment, not presentable enough, kind of dumpy, not doing great in life. And I will say a lot of women marry in that area. And so then that's where they are chronically unhappy once they're married and wanting to change him because those things that he wasn't giving her or the things that he's lacking that she's settling for, dating down for, whatever term you wanna give it, she's gonna to wanna to constantly try to change him into the Prince Charming. I wouldn't even say the husband zone, I would say the Prince Charming, meaning he is completely chivalrous, he gives everything to her, but he's also masculine, he has some dark triad. Like, you want to add all these things. And this is, I just did a video about disrespect and why most men, once they're married, you're gonna, if you're in these zones outside of Prince Charming, you're gonna get a lot of disrespect because she doesn't inherently respect you. We don't really inherently expect, uh, respect guys who don't exert a certain amount of masculinity and we don't respect them if they don't, if they also don't behave kind of like Prince Charming. So how is a man supposed to win? This is why a lot of men are turning away from relationships and marriage because look how complicated this is. And everything he's saying is 100% correct. It's, it's just blowing my mind that, you know, the way he's broken this down. But guys, I don't, um, I'm, th this video is kind of long, so I'm going to leave a link to the original below. Check out Whole Maps channel. I think he's very smart. And you can actually, he sells this map that you can actually buy. I may buy one just so I can have it because I just love the illustrations that he used. And his whole channel, he does things like this to try to show the, 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 the inconsistencies and the fallacies and women's logic when it comes to dating and relationships because a lot of times the behavior that we do, the dating that we do, it is not geared towards what we say we want. It's emotion-based and it doesn't give us the results. So guys, make sure you leave a comment below, check out Home Math channel, uh, leave a like for this video and also follow me on Instagram and TikTok at Real Melanie King and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.